Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at securing web applications with SSL using the Nginx reverse proxy. And the web application that we're going to be securing is the Transmission Daemon web interface. And I specifically chose this one because it has no option for and no support for SSL encryption. And it is an authenticated service. So if we type in our username and password, which the default is transmission and password transmission, it passes it in clear text across the network. So as far as security, that's gonna be a hard no. So we need to fix that with Nginx today. Before we get started, we'll do a short primer on how reverse proxies work. So currently with the transmission server, we have the transmission daemon bound to the 192.168.1.20 IP address and on port 9091. So when we want to access it from the client, we can type into our web browser, HTTP server 04 colon 9091, and we'll access it over our clear text protocol. The way a reverse proxy works is that it's going to sit in the middle and it's going to listen for and accept requests on behalf of the transmission server. So in our case, the client's going to make a request to the reverse proxy, still thinking that it's the transmission server. When the reverse proxy sees that it gets a request for server 4 coming in, it's going to forward it off to the transmission server and return the reply to the client. So in this case, we can have the encryption terminate on the reverse proxy and then pass a clear text to the transmission server. But in our case, we're going to have both the reverse proxy and the transmission server sitting both on one physical server running as two separate services. So in order to make the transmission server not accessible over the LAN, we're going to bind it to the loopback address. And then we're going to bind the reverse proxy to the LAN address. And when the reverse proxy gets a request for the transmission server, it's going to send the request off to the loopback address. So in our Nginx configuration, we'll set up our SSL certificates and have it set to only accept HTTPS requests. And once it gets that, only over the loopback address will it forward those clear text credentials. So there will be no way to sniff those credentials over the network. With that, let's go ahead and jump in and get the setup. Once you're logged into the server, the first thing we'll need to do is install Nginx. So we'll use sudo apt install Nginx. Enter your password. Once that's installed, we're going to change into the configuration directory. Then we're going to generate our SSL keys. Uh, don't encrypt the private key. Good for 10 years. Going to use SHA-384 and RSA 2048 keys, and we do need a new uh, private key. The private key is going to be servercert.key. And the actual certificate is going to be called servercert.crt. And the important part is the common name. So we're going to call this server04.home.local. And if we take a look here, we should have them both here. Clear that out. Now we can change into sites available and set up our configuration file. And I'll go ahead and jump to the end where this is configured and then I will walk you through what everything means. All right, I have it all set up now. So the first thing you need is the server block, which defines a new server. 
Next, we need to say what port it's going to listen on and the scheme. So we're going to be listening on port 443. We're going to be using SSL. And I went ahead and set it up for HTTP2. Uh, next, the server name that it's listening for is server04.home.local. So when it receives the request for that, um, it'll forward it off to the local host, but if it receives just an IP address on port 443, it'll go to the default server. Uh, server tokens are is off. That's a security thing. Everybody should do that. The SSL certificate is the one that we generated earlier. Same with the key. Uh, we defined SSL as on. Uh, we set up the SSL session cache. That way, every time you connect, you don't have to reset up the connection if it's been less than 10 minutes. This is for performance. Um, we're going to go ahead and use TLS 1.3 since it's available. Um, for the SSL ciphers, I went ahead and said use high ciphers, which is a default for TLS 1.3, but just in case we add 1.2 for backwards compatibility and then explicitly denied several other ones such as DES, MD5, RC4, the really weak ones. And then SSL prefers server ciphers on, so the server is gonna choose what cipher we use, uh, the location of the access log for when you access the server. And then location is where our actual server, the transmission server is at, where we're gonna forward our requests. So first we're gonna set a couple headers. So the host header, and then we're gonna have the real IP, which is, as it says, the real IP of the client that's connecting because when the transmission server receives it, it's gonna be seeing the IP address of the proxy and we would like to see what the actual client is. The X forwarded four is similar, except it's gonna have a list. Um, in our case, you'll only ever see the client, but if we went through several hops, you would see client, proxy one, proxy two, and so on added to the list. X forwarded for proto uh, is the scheme. So that's gonna be either HTTP or HTTPS. And then finally, we have the proxy pass. So we're gonna proxy pass it to HTTP colon localhost colon uh, 9091. And then down here, I'm just saying, if you're not using git header post, just return a 405. So let's go ahead and write that out. And then we can use sudo engine x hyphen t to check if we have any configuration errors. It came back okay. So we use sudo systemctl restart engine x restart. So let's go ahead and go back to Firefox and take a look and see if we can access it over SSL now. Before we go over to Firefox, it would be a good idea to actually enable the new site. So we're going to use sudo ln-s for a symbolic link, then etsy engine x sites available, transmission, etsy engine x uh, sites enabled, and then we'll reboot engine x. And now we'll head over to Firefox. Now we can try accessing the transmission server again, but this time over HTTPS. So let's go ahead and give that a try. And I did go ahead and set up server 04 as a host name in my host file pointing at 192.168.1.20. So we'll try that. And you can see we get the security risk from the self-signed certificate. If you don't wanna see this every time, you can come up here more information, view certificate, come down here, download the certificate and then import it so it's a trusted certificate. But for now, we'll hit advance, accept the risk and continue, enter our username and password. And you can see that the server came up. But we can also still access it through HTTP. If we come over here and we put in HTTP colon slash slash, server 04 on port 9091. And we don't want that. We only want to be able to access it through the reverse proxy with HTTPS. So let's go ahead and fix that back in the terminal. So to do that, we need to edit the configuration file for transmission, but first we need to turn it off. 
Otherwise, when you start the transmission service again, it's going to overwrite all of your changes. I'm not sure why they do that, but just make sure you shut it off first. And then we'll change directory into XE transmission. Take a look, see what's in here. So we need to edit the settings.json file. We're gonna come down here to RPC bind address here. And we're gonna change this to the loopback address. And then we can restart. And then when we go back to Firefox, we can try it again. Now, back in Firefox, we can try accessing it again over HTTP, server 04. And you can see we just get the default engine X, but we need colon 9091. You can see that it doesn't connect. And then when we try to access it over HTTPS colon whack whack server 04, advance, accept the risk and continue. we get our server. And if you did notice just a second ago, if we go to HTTP colon server 04, just normally like that, you get the default NGINX page. If you wanna get rid of that, go into Etsy engine X sites enabled and delete default. And that is how you use the NGINX reverse proxy to set up SSL encryption on web servers that otherwise would not support it. Remember, if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.